Welcome to Blueprint IoT and today we will take a look on the most simple Wi-Fi capable microcontrollers. So let's dive right into it. First we have the ESP8266 from Espressive, a relatively old chip but it comes with Wi-Fi and you see here the Note MCU version. The more recent version would be the ESP32 equipped with Wi-Fi as well and also manufactured by Espressive. But let's take a look on the big two. First of all, on Arduino side we have the Arduino Nano and on Raspberry Pi side we have the Raspberry Pi Pico. Both of those boards don't come with any Wi-Fi by default, so you have to add it with a special version. For the Arduino we can get the Arduino Nano IoT, to be precise Nano IoT 33. And for the Pico we can just add a Wi-Fi version, which comes with this little additional Wi-Fi chip. But for both those options don't come for free. Arduino adds a significant 10 euros, which is basically doubling the price of the normal Nano, while Raspberry Pi adds another 2.5 euros roughly, which is just a little increase in price. But before we talk about the prices too much, let's go for the proper comparison. So once more we have the ESP8266, the ESP32, the Arduino Nano IoT and the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So in Arduino's case the IoT is supposed to indicate the Wi-Fi functionality and in the Raspberry Pi case the W stands for wireless to indicate that it's Wi-Fi capable. But talking about wireless, Wi-Fi is not everything. There's also Bluetooth. While the ESP8266 comes with no Bluetooth at all, so you can add it using an additional module, external module, but not by default. The ESP32 is equipped with Bluetooth by default, as well as the Nano and the Pico W. But for the Pico W it's a bit complicated. Officially it's shipped without any Bluetooth capability. But the chip itself is actually Bluetooth capable and just now there was a new version of the SDK released and now it's possible to utilize the Bluetooth functionality that was hardware wise always there but software wise not enabled. So we will keep Bluetooth as semi available here. But let's go for the comparison. First of all we will take a look on the off the shelf price. The ESP8266 comes at around 4 euros. Of course all those prices as always depend on your location and the quantity you buy and the supplier you buy and so on and so forth. The ESP32 comes at around 7 euros, the Arduino Nano at around 20 bucks and the Pico at around 7 euros. Remember that you can get the Nano much cheaper in case you don't need Wi-Fi and you can also get the Pico a bit cheaper in case you don't need Wi-Fi. So without Wi-Fi we would look roughly at 10 bucks for the Nano and 5 bucks for the Pico. So even without Wi-Fi the ESP family would be still cheaper. But let's take a look on the communication side. All of the four boards come with I2C, SPI and UART. While this is not a comparison specialized on the communication interfaces, I would just leave it like this. There are minor differences in how many interfaces you have for each of them, but in general we can say all of them are capable for I2C, SPI and UART. Once it comes to voltage, they are all supplied with micro USB, so 5 volt. But the GPIOs run at all four boards at 3.3 volts, so make sure to not overpower the GPIOs by using any kind of sensor supplied with 5 volts or whatever, so only 3.3 volts for the GPIOs. Talking about GPIOs, it gets a bit complicated. So let me try to explain this as clear as possible. The ESP8266 is equipped with 17 GPIOs, and please remember this is a Note MCU version. And it kind of depends on the manufacturer how many of the overall available GPIOs. But in general you find those boards with 17 GPIOs. In addition there will be an ADC, in this case only one ADC channel. But at least there is an analog digital converter at all. For the ESP32 it's really the most complicated case. So first of all the ESP32 itself comes with 48 GPIOs. But in this Note MCU version which is basically developer version it comes normally with 32 or 34 GPIOs. And again this depends on the manufacturer that is actually putting the ESP32 onto this breakout what we call Node MCU or developer kit. In those 32 or 34 GPIOs are 6 or 8 ADC pins included. 
So once we talk about ADCs, it's not really that there are eight or six ADCs mounted on top of the board. We are actually talking about the ADC channels. So of those 32 or 34 GPIOs, six or eight of them are dual use and can be used as an ADC input. But there is more. The ESP32 comes with a second ADC on board, which is another 10 channels for analog digital converting. But those 10 channels normally don't appear in your pinout because as soon as you turn on the Wi-Fi or you want to use the Wi-Fi, you cannot longer use this second ADC with 10 channels. And since this comparison is all about Wi-Fi, we will ignore those 10 additional ADC channels. Nevertheless, some manufacturers will bring those channels to certain GPIOs so you can use it. But as soon as you use the Wi-Fi, you will maybe wonder why you cannot find your ADC signals anymore. And that's because it's automatically deactivated as soon as you activate the Wi-Fi. Since this whole pinout thing, especially for the ASP32, is a bit more complicated, I will put a link in the video description where the whole pinout struggle is very nicely explained in a nice blog post. But let's move on to the Nano IoT. We will find a total of 14 GPIOs, of which 8 are supposed to be ADC pins. So again, 8 of those GPIOs can be dual use as a digital or an analog input pin. For the Pico, we have actually 26 GPIOs, of which 3 can be used as an ADC. So looking at those GPIOs, the ESP32 is definitely the best one. Even though not all of the GPIOs are real GPIOs, some of them are also only input pins, but that's a rabbit hole for its own. But nevertheless, it's leading the GPIO count. For the ADC, I would definitely say the Nano has the lead because with eight channels, it's more than the others. Of course, the ESP32 has a total maximum of 18 ADCs, but as you can't use those 10 ADC channels as soon as you use the Wi-Fi, and these other ADC channels are normally only six on the surface and the other two are hidden inside the board, the Nano can provide eight in a real world scenario. So I would promote the Nano as the leader. Once we talk about digital GPIOs, it's a bit more complicated depending on your use case. If you assume that you use all your ADC channels because this is basically cannibalizing your digital GPIOs. But nevertheless, I would say the Pico is the leader here because the ESP32 is a bit more complicated as mentioned before, but I think it's quite similar to the Pico, while the ESP8266 and the Nano are definitely losing ground. Of course, those pin numbers here are not the total pin numbers, it's only the GPIOs and the ADCs, because there are additional pins for 3.3 volt power supply, 5 volt power supply, ground and everything else like reset pins and so on and so forth. But since we talked a lot about the ADCs, let's take a look on the resolution of them. The ESP8266 comes with a 10-bit ADC, so you can have values from 0 to 1023. The other three boards come all with a 12-bit ADC, so you can represent values from 0 to 4095. So the ESP8266 is definitely losing ground with only one ADC and even though lowest bit rate, but for the most applications, I would say 10 bit is still enough. But of course, 12 bits is definitely multiplying our capabilities. So since we talked about Wi Fi in this comparison, let's take a closer look on the Wi Fi, which is quite simple. All of them come with a 2.4 gigahertz band Wi Fi. To be completely precise, there is actually a new version of the ESP32 that comes also with a 5 GHz dual band Wi-Fi chip, but this is not really available as the developer version or the Note MCU version at the moment right now. So I hope this will be available soon. But anyway, let's close this comparison by a quick summary. If you have a super simple application and you really just need Wi-Fi, the ESP8266 is a clear winner because of its price. It's absolutely unbeatable cheap and can really provide a lot. As soon as you need some more capability, no matter if it's more ADC channels or more GPIOs or more processing power, you have the choice between the ESP32 and the Pico W both at roughly the same price and quite comparable performance. And once more, we're not going into the details here, but just by looking on the price and the GPIO pins available and so on and so forth, 
the ESP32 is kind of in the lead since it has more ADC channels and roughly the same number of GPIO pins. But of course the Raspberry Pi Pico W comes with a bunch of other benefits like the Raspberry Pi environment, different coding languages and also a pretty nice chip actually. Performance wise the Nano is kind of in the middle but price wise it's really like no option at all. With 20 bucks it's really incredibly expensive. So you could buy almost three Picos or three ESP32s or even five ESP8266. Of course the only benefit to mention maybe is that you're inside the Arduino environment. But apart from this I wouldn't have a reason to opt for the Nano. In case you have a good reason why to go for the Arduino Nano IoT 33, please let me know in the comments. I would be really interested in your use case because again I'm wondering what's Arduino doing here with its price policy because you can get really different boards for a much cheaper price. But let me know what's your opinion. So thanks for watching. In case you like comparisons like this, give this video a thumbs up and make sure to be subscribed for more content around IoT. See you next time.